Yeah, she really just allowed me to go after my dreams, I think, pushing me to be outside. Um, nowadays, it's a lot of, you know, social media, kids staying inside, etc. So it's pretty neat um, to have that influence from my mother, you know, at a young age to say, hey, get outside, go with the guys, go fishing, go hunting, you know. Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast, inspiring real women with a passion for fishing and the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your fearless host, Angie Scott. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast. I'm in the middle of sharing a series of interviews with you from iCast, which happened a few short weeks ago down in Orlando, Florida. This week is especially timely because I'm featuring my conversation with Savannah Stenland from St. Croix Rods. Many of you are familiar with this iconic brand of fishing rods made right here in the USA in Park Falls, Wisconsin. I'm sure a lot of you even have one or more of their rods in your arsenal. I mention this is timely because I just got back from a long overdue trip back home to visit my family in Minnesota and I mentioned a possible upcoming trip to Savannah during our conversation you're going to hear today. I had this trip in mind and was planning to make a little pit stop on the way there to finally tour the St. Croix Rod facility in person and see how these rods are made. I got to tell you, if you ever get the opportunity to stop in and do this free tour, definitely do it. I had no idea how much goes into crafting a fishing rod, the long history behind St. Croix Rod, and so much more. Our tour guide, Ken, has been there for many, many years, and he was super knowledgeable. Did you know St. Croix Rods is the only major rod manufacturer that makes their own blanks and don't have them shipped in from another country. The blank making process was incredibly interesting and I love that they put the care and attention into their product to be sure they have control over the quality by making those blanks in house. So much of these rods are made by hand with care from a huge team of hard-working men and women right there in Park Falls. So Savannah is fairly new to the team and it was really great to meet her in person at iCast and then again we had a short visit when I was there in Park Falls for the tour. I know you're really going to enjoy meeting Savannah as well, hearing a little bit about her story, her journey to landing her dream job in the fishing and outdoors industry, and some of the great new products St. Croix has recently introduced. Enjoy, everyone. Alright everyone, welcome to another episode of the Woman Angler and Adventure podcast. I'm here at iCast and I am with Savannah Stenlin with St. Croix Rod and I am very happy to feature her on the show. She's pretty new to St. Croix. Two months. So yeah, so um, thank you Savannah for taking some time out at a busy, busy schedule at iCast to be on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me here with you. I'm really excited to work with you, um, you know, being on our pro staff here um, and just getting to have a conversation and be in the podcast with you. I'm uh, really looking forward to it and, you know, having women in this industry is pretty awesome. Absolutely. So um, let's talk a little bit about your ground before we get into talking about St. Croix and some of the new products that you guys have out. How did you get into fishing to in the beginning? Yeah, so I grew up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. I am known as a youper. Um, <laughs> so some of you may know what that is, some of you may not, but I'm a northern girl. Um, grew up hunting and fishing up there. My dad, my brother, my grandpa, you know, my mom really got me incorporated in the outdoors at a young age. You know, I lived on the water my whole entire life. Um, Little Baby Knock is where I grew up on walleye fishing, smallmouth fishing. Um, and it's kind of stayed with me wherever I go um, throughout my adventures. And I've never really lost touch of the outdoors. So i um, really crediting a lot of it back to my family and just growing up that way and being surrounded by the great outdoors. So, Well, I don't hear a whole lot when I, when I ask that question to, to the ladies I've had on the show about mom being a big influence. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about your mom. Like, why was she such a big influence for you? 
Yeah, she really just allowed me to go after my dreams, I think, pushing me to be outside. Um, nowadays, it's a lot of you know social media, kids staying inside, etc. So it's pretty neat um, to have that influence from my mother, you know, at a young age to say, hey, get outside, go with the guys, go fishing, go hunting, you know. I never was really big into shopping or makeup like some individuals were. So she just kind of let me do my thing. And, you know, when we would go to camp, she'd be like, do you need anything, you know, helping me get ready and just you know, never holding me back from doing those things that I felt attached to. Um, and she's always grown up outdoors, you know, showing me how to how to cook, how to garden, etc. So it's in her blood too. And I just kind of followed in those footsteps with her and she's just pushed me along the way. So it's pretty awesome. She's amazing. Yeah. That is awesome. I love to hear that. Uh, I wish there was more of that. And, and, you know, hopefully with, you know, last year, you know, you're hearing more and more stories about people getting outdoors and hopefully that's trickling down to kids as well. And maybe we'll get, we'll have more of those stories going forward. Yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest thing is, you know, when you see a young kid who's watching you maybe on the bank or you're in a boat um, and you see a kid fishing offshore, you know, if, if you go up to them and have a conversation with them and you're like, hey, you know, would you mind, you know, wanting to jump in the boat with me? Or do you mind if I come fishing with you? Or do you want to learn something from me? If you can share those things and keep them engaged, it's going to keep them engaged in the sport of fishing. And they're going to want to keep doing it throughout the rest of their life and passing on those traditions to family members, friends, even their own kids, you know, along the way. So I think it's very important that we focus on them as well um, and share our knowledge that we have in getting other people in the water. Absolutely. And that's a big thing. You know, we're here at ICAST. We've got the Recreational Boating and Fishing Foundation, and they've got this Women Making Waves initiative, which you got to be a part of yeah. the uh, the little, um, I guess you call it a mixer yeah. event that we had over at the Shimano booth the other day. And uh, what did you think about all that? Yeah, it's just pretty neat because a lot of times, you know, personally for me, I'm, I'm around a lot of guys. It's um predominantly heavy you know with male um so it's nice to be able to go interact with other females besides social media because a lot of these events you know you're at your booth you can walk around and it's a lot easier and more comfortable to go introduce yourself to someone and just get familiar with different faces within the industry different women um, who are doing all these amazing things um and you know fishing different species and you can learn so much from somebody else and you never know what these um you know the friendships that are going to develop over the time with these different events so it's just pretty neat to get all of us in one place together and interact and just get to know others and where they're from and what they've grown up doing as well absolutely so this you know this is my second icast Mm -hmm. since we didn't have it last year and the year before was my first this is your first icast so um you know that that first experience for me was a total game changer and i'm sure it has been for you this year yeah it's it's been amazing. Um, we've had, our booth has been so busy over by us, nonstop talking, but just the people, you know, I've met throughout here, you know, like-minded, um, passionate about being in this industry. It's just great to make those connections with people and, you know, hey, do you want to, if you're ever down in this area, stop over, we can do some fishing. And you're getting these experiences that you would have never gotten before without being in this Absolutely. industry. So it's been, it's been like a whirlwind of emotions, honestly. Um, you know, I've been here two months. I got to jump in and go to the Bassmaster Classic right away too, which was awesome. Um, then we had our big customer appreciation day up in Park Falls, Wisconsin. Um, and now we're down here in Orlando <laughs> at ICAST. So it's been busy, but I've gotten to meet so many new faces, um, and see some familiar faces here at ICAST. So it's been a great time. Yeah. So you've had a, a, interesting career trajectory that kind of landed you here and um it sounds like to me that you've you've found your happy place oh my gosh so much yeah i was working in um, corporate hr before doing this for probably three and a half four years um and just knew the outdoors is where I wanted to be. Um, and it's a competitive industry to get into. And a lot of it's made through connections. And I didn't really have any prior to this job. Um, so I applied online through outdoorindustryjobs.com. You know, I looked, I was like, there's got to be a place out here that has outdoor jobs. And I found it, applied to St. Croix and was fortunate enough to go through the interview process and get hired on. And I work with a wonderful team um, of gentlemen and women over there at St. Croix and Park Falls. And um, we have a lot of great things in store for us moving forward. So it's great to be be here. That's awesome. So for anyone listening who is dreaming of getting a job in the outdoors industry, you can do it. I mean, go to Outdoor Industry 
What was it? Jobs.com? Oh, yep. Or? Outdoor industry jobs.com. Yeah. That's yeah. where I found it. And I was like, Holy moly, finally, something that's out there for us to be able to find outdoor jobs if you don't have those connections within the industry. So if you're looking for an outdoor job, highly recommend going on there and looking for one. So, yeah, that's amazing. That's an amazing story. And um, I'm probably going to be driving up to Minnesota in the beginning of August. So hopefully I can stop by Park Falls because I've never toured the facility before. So if you guys are doing tours. We are. Okay. Yep. So that would be awesome um, and meet up with you as, uh, as we're passing through. That would be really cool. So let's talk about some of the – so St. Croix has a lot of new products out this year. Um, you guys were up for some new product awards at the uh, ICAST uh, showcase or whatever you call it. So, But one I really want to touch on is the new Victory yeah. series yeah. because – I was fortunate enough to get to be a part of that early in the year. Um, we did some filming on the Dora Canal to help promote the, the Victory Series, and that was my first introduction to it. And um, I got to take a rod home, which was a nice uh, perk of that. But um, I absolutely love it because it's I love what Victory represents. And then it's a very high quality rod, uh, species specific. So it makes it like really easy or technique specific, right? Yeah, so yeah. it makes it really easy for people to, who maybe aren't, you know, as knowledgeable as like what kind of rod I need for this type of technique. You can. From billion dollar ad budgets and arena naming rights to tens of thousands of retail locations, big wireless providers spend big to appear like they're your only option. How do they afford it all? (laughs) That big bill you get at the end of every month. Mint Mobile had a different idea. Instead of brick and mortar overhead, Mint Mobile is online only. What does that mean for you? A whole lot of savings because wireless plans from Mint Mobile start at just $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for just $15 a month. You'll save enough that you can get a brand new rod and reel for the upcoming season. For anyone who just hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan, and you can even keep your same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. By going online only and eliminating traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash waypoint. That's mintmobile.com slash waypoint. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash waypoint. Um, pick that you know specific rod and it's at a it's a high quality rod at a price point that people can actually yes. afford. Yes, I think that's one of the best things about it is um, that it is the price point of it um, ranges anywhere kind of from that 180 to 260 range, I want to say. Um, and it's like you said, it's a great price point for people. It's not overly expensive, um, technique specific. So that's really awesome too, especially as we've had so many new anglers coming into this industry within the past year. Um, I think it's more important you know, now more than ever to make it easy for people to understand what rod they need, um, what lures they should be using, what kind of braided line or, you know, monofilament line they can be using out on the water, what's best for them, making it easy because when it becomes a challenge, it kind of deters people away from wanting to, you know, go out and buy a rod. You know, they feel intimidated. They may not know or feel comfortable walking into a store and asking somebody. So having this, you know, technique specificness for these victory rods is awesome. Also, too, the great thing about it is, yes, they have technique specific, but it doesn't mean they're good for just one type of technique. Um, You know, we have a chart at St. Croix, which is pretty awesome, that shows all the different techniques that the different rods can handle, which is pretty cool. Um, So, yeah, they're, they're wonderful. The rods are great. Like you said, love what they stand for. And I encourage all of you to think about what victory means to you, what victory means on the water for you. Um, It's very, very um, important to think about that and really understand why you're out on the water sometimes and why why you pursue this passion of yours. 
um, and think about the people that have helped get you there along the way if they have and those who have influenced you. Yeah. Um, we started out with the grade eights and we released that back a while ago, but now we just released the 17, the rest of them in the line. Um, so you'll be able to get your hands on the rest of these in the fall time here coming up. Um, what's cool about these is we have our carbon fiber SC3 plus blanks matched with our fortified resin system technology, offering our maximum power and strength with a significant reduced blank weight. Um, so that's a big thing for us was the technology that goes into this, all of our rods. And what's great about these is they're handcrafted up in Park Falls, USA, um, for any anglers worldwide. So if you're looking to get your hands on one of these, um, you know, go into your local retailer. Um, You know, come up to the Park Falls factory store, stop in. You can buy rods there. There's clothing. Um, We even have baits, live baits up there in Park Falls. If you're coming up there to fish or just stop in, and like you mentioned, a tour. Uh, We are open for tours. And if you're a St. Croix fan or, you know, you've heard about us before and want to know what that process looks like for us and how our rods are really handcrafted um, from the ground up come up there do a tour see the detail the consistency that goes into making our rods and to all the wonderful people on our manufacturing floors who are working so hard to get the rods out the door for us Um, demand is high um, so you know just being patient to get your hands on one may be a little bit um, you know may take a little time but patience Um, You'll get one in your hands eventually if you haven't already done so. But, yeah, I highly encourage you. Um, These are great rods, great to fish with. Get them in your hands if you can get them. I know, Angie, you can attest to that as well. Um, And come up and see us in Park Falls, you know. Stop in, give us a call ahead of time, and we'll get you scheduled for a tour. What, uh, what hours are you open for those tours? Um, you can do two tours a day. Um, I don't know the exact times of the tours, but if you call, they'll get you scheduled in. They do it based around um, when the breaks on the manufacturing floor are, just so that when the tours are happening, you're, you're able to see the people back there working right. and seeing you know the process of what it takes to build one of our rods. That makes sense. So I remember when I did the, the shoot, they asked me, part of it was, what does victory mean to me? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think victory can mean a lot of things when it comes to fishing. Uh, I think my answer was just doing, accomplishing something new. Like, I remember the first time I ever caught my first fish on the fly. Oh, cool. Which, you know, I'm not a fly angler. I'm mostly conventional. So um, I just remember that moment of making that cast, and it was an inshore fishing experience. And um, and there was a school of uh, jack Craval that oh, were like going nice. going off and so all I had to do is get my fly just close enough <laughs> and I was likely gonna be able to get one but then I hooked I hooked a fish and I was like now what do I do because I've only practiced casting and fly mm-hmm. I've never done the after part of it yeah. but I uh you know figured it out and I had a couple people there kind of coaching me through it and I got the fish and it ended up being what they call a blue fish which is similar to a, a jack but it fought really hard and it was super fun and, you know, to me, that's what victory on the water means is, is, you know, accomplishing a goal, mm-hmm. catching a new species, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. something, something along those lines. You know, I interviewed a lady the other day that her, her, she has multiple world records wow. catches mm-hmm. uh, under her belt. And that's her thing. Mm-hmm. Like she goes after, okay, what can I get a world record catch next? Mm-hmm. And she just got back from Texas with uh, fishing alligator gar oh and paddlefish, so I think, cool. in Louisiana. And she's got now several pending world records from that trip. So to me, I think that's her victory yeah. on the water, you know, mm-hmm. so it can mean different things to different people, but it, it's such a cool thing what this line stands for. And I hope everybody listening checks it out. Yeah, It's a great line. Um, and like you said, victory can mean so many things, you know, for you, you know, it's new techniques, new species. And I'd say probably the same thing for me, as well as being able to share that knowledge with others, because I remember what it was like. You know, in that being in that position where you don't know a technique and you don't know the actions of a rod and what you should be using, what baits you should be using, and being able to share that knowledge to make it easy and comfortable for someone, um, you know, that maybe working for one of these companies someday um, or a professional angler or somebody who's out being a professional kayak angler, whatever that looks like for you, um, being able to share that knowledge with them and pass it down the line, or somebody who just loves to go out fishing. Um, making it easy, making them feel comfortable. Um, and I think that's probably what victory looks like to me is just being able to share that passion with other individuals. Awesome. Well, are there any other new products you want to touch on? 
before we uh, sign off? Yeah, so we have um, a few other new rods coming out. We have our new Trout Series rod um, with constructed with our newly engineered SC2 carbon fiber uh, that is stronger in flexural strength and lighter than its previous formulation. We have our Bass X, which a lot of you have been able to see as well. We had that down at the Classic, um, newly engineered SC2 carbon fiber um, that is stronger in the flexural strength as well, um, lighter than its previous formulation, uh, with the hybrid guide platform featuring our Sea Guides, which is pretty awesome. I mean, if you can get your hands on this rod, it's great. The price is wonderful as well. Um, any fairware from that 120 to 150 range, um, it's, a, it's a great rod um, on a friendly budget, I guess if you want to call it. And then for our ice ice friends, our ice family, uh -huh. I'm a big ice fisherman myself. Nice. Um, you know, we have our new Tundra rods um, that we just, you know, Tundra ice rods that we have out, our Legend Extreme rods as well, and then our Icon Walleye walleye rods the color on these are amazing it's called the walleye green i believe um i could be wrong but i, I think it's pretty similar to that same with the sc2 carbon fiber there stronger and lighter than its previous formulation so and then we have our siege surf rods as well of our as well as our new panfish siri rods so lots of amazing things happening here for 2022 um and lots of great things you know down the pipeline that are happening for us at st croix so if you haven't checked us out um, please do so. You can go to St. Croix rods.com. Um, you know, if you see someone from St. Croix, don't be afraid to stop them. You know, anyone on our team is, you know, happy to have a conversation with you, you know, stop and talk, whether that's about, you know, rods or just what it's like to be a part of the St. Croix family or just to say hi. Um, don't hesitate to reach out to us there. Awesome. I need to go check out the, these uh, walleye rods because oh. I want to see that color you're talking about. You should see it when it shines in the sunshine. <laughs> it is. It's a pretty beautiful color. I can't. I haven't got. I haven't gotten my hands on one yet, obviously, because they just have gotten out. Uh, but I can't wait to get on the water since I'm grown up walleye fishing. Yeah. Um, it's it'll my be, favorite. Yeah, it's one. I don't know. I love it too. I think it's one. It's my top as well. Um, I know a lot of the guys on my team, they like to fish for bass, but I would say I'd like to choose walleye over the bass, but bass are fun too. Don't get me wrong. I'm the same. Um, and I think the reason why I love walleye so much is because growing up in Minnesota, yep. um, that was the coveted fish. I mean, it's the best eating fish. And so I always made my dad so proud if I caught a nice walleye mm -hmm. to bring home oh, yeah. to eat. And so they may not be, I mean, they fight pretty good. Yeah. And they're a beautiful fish, and I love I love toothy fish Me for too. whatever reason. But, I don't know why, because you get all scraped up with them. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was just the the uh, accomplishment of contributing something to the family oh, yeah. to be able to eat. And, I yeah. would say the same thing. That's kind of how I grew up as well. Is you know we went out there to fish to obviously have a good time on the water, yeah. but for us it was going out there to be able to provide for our family. And some people, like you mentioned, are out for trophy fish. You know, I was talking to someone the other day. I was like, yeah, you know, I love to go out. It doesn't matter the size for me. Most of the time it's to get a few fish to put in the freezer, you know, to have it, you know, last us for a little while or have that fresh mm -hmm. fish a cookout or, you know, you're out on the water and you stop at a campsite or, you know, you're on a rock point and you can hop off and go, you know, do a catch and cook on the side, whatever that looks like. But being able to provide for yourself, for your family, I think is pretty cool. But some people do it for the trophy sizes as well. But that's how I grew up with, yeah. you know, fishing for food most of the time. Before we, before we go, um, one thing that I hear over and over whenever I talk to other people about St. Croix rods is, the amazing customer service and the amazing warranty that St. Croix has. So, yes, you're paying a lot of money, you know, typically for like, you know, really good rod, but you have that warranty, which is peace of mind for people. Talk a little bit about that before we sign off. Yeah, so we have wonderful warranty process. It depends on the rod that you're buying um, with the warranty that comes in. We have different programs that you can join. Um, so if you're having issues with the rod, tip top falls off, a guide breaks, rod breaks, etc., we do have our guide center that you can call into, send an email into. I just ask that you be patient right now. Um, as everybody in this industry and industries across the world right now are facing, you know, the backorder systems are not having enough product right now to push it out the door right away to you. Um, but those people over there in the guide center on the manufacturing floor are working their butts off to get back to you, to answer the emails, the calls, the voicemails. Um, they are working so hard over there to make sure that we can take care of our customers. Um, and if you get to interact with one of our people, you'll just know how you know, great these individuals are and how much they care about our St. Croix family and everyone who's buying rods from us, and they will get you taken care of. 
Awesome. I love that about St. Croix, and I'm happy to be a part of the team yeah. and represent and use these rods as I fish my tournaments. I mean, it's uh, definitely an advantage to have the sensitivity and the comfort and lightweight of the St. Croix rods in my arsenal. So and We're happy to have you on the team as well. It's pretty great. Um, you know, it's been wonderful to meet so many great people on our pro staff um just but just getting these experiences in person and getting to learn more about you yourself and all the wonderful things that you're doing for the industry and women in this industry is pretty amazing so thank you for all you're doing as well uh, thank you so much and thanks again for taking some time out of a busy busy iCast to sit down with me and talk about St. Croix and and your your path to getting here and uh, we're so happy to have you aboard yeah thank you and I can't wait to do more of these with you All right. Thanks, everyone, once again for tuning in to the Woman Angler and Adventure podcast. As always, I hope you're enjoying these episodes and look forward to sharing another great episode with you next week. If you like what you hear, as I always say, make sure you're leaving a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're able to leave a review, whatever your favorite uh, podcast platform is. And also be sure and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Lots of great stuff in store. Lots of great conversations had down at ICAST that I can't wait to share with you all. And much, much more to come. Thanks again, everyone. And tight lines. <laughs>